Thank you so much once again all for participating. So you're, you're, you're totally disconnected from the um, physical environment and you are immersed in a digital. An example of this is, for instance, take for instance, a medical student who is trying to um, understand the particular structure of, 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 of a certain organ. Let's take the arts, for instance. Now, there's, there's a digital image of the art. Through virtual reality, the medical student can be disconnected from the physical environment and then is able to interact with a digital image as if it is real life. The medical student is able to interact with this digital image as if it is real life through virtual reality. And as such, this particular trend has brought an increase so uh, has brought a transformation and is also transforming the way um, medical education um, is being offered. Also, it helps with surgical training and planning, which allows both patients and surgeons to get more comfortable. It can be used to manage physical and psychological conditions like stress, anxiety, dementia, and chronic pain. Currently, there are some virtual reality um, technology that are currently being used in managing some uh, um, mental health conditions such as such as uh, um, Alzheimer's disease and some other uh, dementia as well and some other uh, kind of uh, mental health condition. Also, all right, so right, I will move on. Also, it is also used in robotic surgeries, which means fewer risk of complications and a faster procedure. So if you want to read more and learn more about virtual reality, um, there, there, there will be some links sent to us later after this event where we can you know, get more information on these digital health trends. So as to conserve time, I would like to move on. So the next trend is the internet of things, the IOT. In the medical field, we call it internet of medical things. Now, what does internet of things mean? Internet of Things basically means it, it could be seen as some um, devices that could be worn on your body, gather your healthcare data and transmit it through the website to your healthcare providers. Internet of Things involves the use of some wearable devices such as trackers, smart watches, um, smart bracelets, um, smart chains or any smart wearable devices that is capable of, you know, uh, um, obtaining some of your medical data, obtaining some of your physiological parameters and transmitting it directly to an healthcare provider, maybe your doctor or your nurse who is in charge of your healthcare and um, that made him have access to this data without seeing you physically and, and an example of this is there, there's there's a smartwatch that can you know read your that can that can that can read your heart rate that can also monitor your blood pressure that can monitor your um um ecg and after these data have been generated it is transmitted to through the website to your healthcare provider who sees the result of this and can from remotely monitor your healthcare, monitor your, 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 um, your, your health status, monitor the progress of a recovery or some other things and you know, make do with anything he wants to do with the data. As healthcare professionals, what is the implication of this particular technology to us? The implication of this is that we as healthcare professionals have to be conversant. Wow, wow. Can we please give him a round of applause in the comment section? Thank you so much. Um, nurse Adewumi Tobiloba. I mean, it was a very wonderful presentation, taking us through the top um, digital health trend in this decade. Thank you very much for that beautiful presentation. Um, we'll be moving to the next um, section, which is the panel discussion. Yes, I mean, this is the real deal. This is one of the main reasons why we are here to explore opportunities, challenges, you know. That's why we brought 
professionals to admit to it to 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 actually take us through this um discussion so that we can learn we can apply and you know we can also you know explore these opportunities so the topic of the panel discussion is e health implementation and utilization in nigeria or africa what are the challenges and what are the way forward i'm sure each and every one of us has some aspects of um, digital health, um, you know, innovative ideas in our mind that we want to, you know, explore, that we want to try out. But of course, it has its own challenges, especially in a country like Nigeria, which is not, you know, really friendly with all these creative ideas and innovative solutions. So we have our panelists I introduced earlier from Mr. Um, Aila Daniel to Dr. Simpa Daniel and to Ms. Olutola Awosiku, you know, take us through this panel discussion so that, you know, we can learn from their story, from their experiences. So, um. I would like to ask, um, Dr. Simpa, good evening, you're welcome, sir. I, I would like to, uh, we would like to hear from you. What does digital health really entails to you, sir? We would like you to share your perspective on what digital health is. All right, so, so overall, right, um, digital health, um, telemedicine, big data and all that, they are realities. All right, they are not things that are perfect. Um, I, I don't know what you read in my citation, but I've spent about 20 years um, using that as my career. I have not practiced clinical medicine since I left medical school. I've been doing, well, what used to be called EL. Um, and now um, ML. And then um, telemedicine. And so the umbrella word now is just digital health. Um, just to put some context, right? When when I started on this journey, there was no mobile phone. Right? So there's a word that existed before that. <clears throat> mobile phones were not part of it. Uh, computers were not. Then when you buy a computer, you buy a cage. So as to protect your desktop from being stolen. But today everybody has devices in their hands. All right. So 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 basically, right? Um, it's a reality, right? I've basically been involved in building platforms um, that support um, digital health. Um, maybe I've built like six of or at least minimum of about five or six variations of that platform um, across across board. Um, Everything that we have said is true. And the potentials are there. The practical evidence is also beginning to become prevalent um, today. It might not be that widespread, but it's becoming prevalent. Um, a lot more hospitals now use some form of electronic medical records. Um, if you go on your Play Store um, and you type telemedicine, teleconsultation, you are going to be, I mean, you'd have more than enough to pick from. All right. So those are evidences that it's it's working. Um, I, I mean, so I don't think that anybody here should be skeptical about the fact that whether telemedicine or data health works or not. Um, so I don't know if I've answered that question. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Um, um, no, Zaina Daniel, um, as, as um, a, a registered nurse and a cardiothoracic nurse who has been in practice and um, who is also currently making moves in uh, um, the digital health space. So I would like to just ask in, in one minute what your view on digital health is as it relates to your current practice as a nurse. 
and have you been able to utilize any of these digital health um, um, resources or some digital health facilities in management of any of your patients? Sir? Thank you so much, Mr. I appreciate you. Once again, I want to appreciate Super Daniel. You know, it's a it's it's a privilege to have someone like you in our midst who has experience exposure in the area of digital health in Nigeria, and not only in Nigeria, in Africa. I tell you because it's not easy to get uh, professionals, not just IT professionals, but um, healthcare professionals who are grounded in the area of digital health in Nigeria and in so Once more, sir, I want to say a big thank you for being here with us to answer our questions, to interact and share your experience, share your knowledge and share your expertise. Now, in the area of digital health, we have heard a lot about what digital health is. And as our more experienced speakers have said, digital health has been around for a very long time. Now, the only issue we have as a community, or let me say as a country, is the slow adoption of digital health technologies. Yes, the slow adoption of digital health technologies. And to me, why I feel it's it's it's, it's slow and poor is because the healthcare professionals themselves are not actively involved in the, 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 the designing, in the, in, the, in the creating, and in the implementation of these technologies. That's what we want to do as, as, as a community. That's what we want to do as a school. That's our basic, our major mission and our major mission. To, to expose healthcare professionals, nurses, doctors, pharmacists, med lab scientists, or chemists to the realities of digital health. Because we know that when we know about digital health, when we know about the, 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 the realities of digital health, it is easier for us to tell clients, it is easier for us to tell the patients. And when we, we are able to tell the patient and the client what it entails, it is easier for them adopt it. So instead of a, a, a regular IT guy who doesn't know anything about, about um, healthcare, he, he, instead of them being the one designing this, this, this solution, let us be the ones involved. So my own interest in the field of data health, you can call it uh, education tech. My interest is to, is to educate healthcare professionals, yes, to educate healthcare professionals. You let them know that look, your skills in medicine, your skills in nursing, your skills in pharmacy can all be integrated into the digital health, uh, the digital health space, especially in in Nigeria and Africa. My interest is in Africa. Thank you so much, um, Nozaina Daniel. Thank you so much, uh, for for that um very very detailed um, um answer. Uh, uh, uh Doctor Simpa, why Nozaina Daniel was talking, he, he made mention of a, a key point that, yes, the, the issue is not about the availability of these digital health, maybe solutions, digital health platforms and all. That's, that's not the issue. That's not the major issue. Now, he, he, he said um, that one of the major issues now is the slow adoption, implementation and utilization of these digital health services or of this digital health platform. Sir, I would like to ask, as an expert who have been in this field for over 20 years, what do you think from your research, from your experiences and um, from education, what, what, what do you think is the reason for this um, slow adoption, implementation and utilization of digital health services and platform in Nigeria and um, let's say Africa at large. Sir. So um, I'll, I'll list a few um, reasons why I think there's no adoption. One, healthcare does not adopt anything quickly. 
That's just standard practice. That's because we're dealing with people's life, right? And we want to be sure that whatever we're adopting works before we adopt it. So I'll give you a non-techie um, scenario and then we'll begin to apply that to tech. That you found something that worked for one person. You don't just then take it and say, oh, this uh, concussion worked for Mr. A. Therefore, let us begin to go and let us begin to apply it to everybody in the hospital. Right? You would go and do clinical trials. You will send it to NAFDAQ. You will do peer review documentation. You do research and then finally come out and say, yes, we have in the lab, on top of rats, before human beings, we have proven that this drug works. So let us now, we have the confidence to go and um, administer it to the rest of the population. Is, is that correct? Yeah, that, that, that's right, sir. Okay. So, so in that same stead, right, when it comes to technology, we transfer that same mindset. Wow. Right? Uh, I used to have a joke, right, um, is that the question is, show she share, right, which in Yoruba means, does it work? Right, so that's, that's one, right? So it has to be proven to work. What you'll also find out is if you go and check literature, there's paucity of, of, of data that shows that digital health works. It does not mean that it does not work, but there's just paucity of data, right? There's paucity of research that shows that digital health works. It actually works, not, not your ethical would work. Do you understand? Now, but as we begin to change that, and as we begin to have conversations around that, as people begin to do more work around that stuff, it gives confidence to everybody else that this thing works. So that's one, right? So there's no adoption of anything in healthcare. Many digital health solutions have failed. Right. And that's because the framework for implementation um, has been very poor. So in most instances, you have computer science people, IT people that think, ah, it's not healthcare. We have done uh, accounting software. We can do hospital software too. I mean, it's not a uh, doctor see patient and then this, that, that. Ah, we can do it. That's, let's just try it and do it. And then they do it. By the time they arrive, You know, you give them three months. That's in the medical records. You know, and they give up. Or they don't begin to understand that ah, this thing is not like they say, it's not Ojula song, right? There's many things that are embedded in it that should make this thing work. There are many interconnections, there are many stakeholders that are that are involved. And then um, so that's also there, right? So and if people see failures, right? So if you go and talk to, say, for instance, um, people that are in the hospital, like that own hospital or hospital administrators, I ask them, ah, why don't you have a like that? You can go to buy your life. If you do this, blah, 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 blah. They can point you to many people that have implemented electronic medical records and it did not work. In short, they might even have lyrics, computers that they bought, um, that they tried to do, but it didn't work. Now, because also when you, when you are doing um, digital health, right? There are two sides to digital health. Let me just say this, right? There's the enterprise side and there's the consumer side, all right? Um, before the advent of mobile phones, there was really no consumer side to, to digital health. It was not that, uh, um, how would I say? It was not that popular, right? Um, so on the enterprise side, right? Just how the hospitals adopting things, you know, uh, pharmacies and all that, you know, basically adopting technology and, and things like that. You would have uh, you know relics of of things that have happened. Um, go to UCH; you can tell you they've had various experience trying to do um, electronic record system, um, or you know telemedicine and, and, and stuff like that. Um, but now that's changing, right? Because over the years, experience have been built. People now understand better. Um, you know that there, there are now academic courses where you can go and learn how you know, um, digital health works. So you have a whole body of health informatics, nursing informatics, 
you know, and, and all that, you know. So even though it's still yes in the early infancy and um, within this country, but globally that's that's changing. A lot of people have, you know, there's migration has happened. A lot of people have more experience and they can see that it can work. And it's now okay. How do we make it work here? So that's the second thing, right? Failed, failed implementations that were not properly thought through. Thank you so much, Dr. Simpa, once again. Uh, I, I would like to also ask um, another question. Um, not, not, not Zainila, are you still with us, sir? Yes, I'm with you, sir. Oh, great, great, great. Uh, I, I would like to ask, sir, um, you, you know, we've been able to identify some of these challenges, and um, Dr. Simpa has also talked about um, this answer a bit, but I, I would like you to, you know, shed more light on it from the healthcare professional's perspective. That um, looking at these challenges, we as healthcare professionals, right here, we have doctors in our midst, we have med lab scientists, health information management um, professionals, uh, pharmacists, nurses, we have everyone right here. Please, can you please tell us our role in um, accelerating the acceptance and implementation of digital health in Nigeria? Dr. Simpa has made mention of some of these roles, but can you just help us highlight some of these roles so that we as healthcare professionals, we can know what we are up to. We can begin to strategize and better position ourselves to you know, take up these responsibilities. Uh, can, can you just share uh, what, what, what you think our roles are in implementing and um, accelerating the acceptance of digital health in Nigeria? Thank you, Nozainla Daniel. No. Uh, uh, there was a recent um, report that was released that in Africa alone, there were two um, tech industries that got more funding. And that was the financial industry, that is FinTech, what we call FinTech, and digital health, especially in West Africa, in Nigeria. That means that the future of digital health is so bright, so it, it's filled up with there are, there, are, there are a lot of problems. And if you listen to what um, I say, say that, that, that entrepreneurs, innovators, when they see problems, they see opportunities. Others see problems and, 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 and they are worried. They are afraid. But when we see problems, we run to them. We see problems as opportunities. We see problems as a means of creating change, yes. So that is what we want to do with Tech Code Digital Health. We want healthcare professionals in Nigeria and Africa to recognize these opportunities. And a very important, um, uh, a very important uh, concept was was introduced. That is research. Research is very, very important. So I'm going to delve a bit more on the research aspect of digital health. You know, Dr. Sipa said something, say that one of the reasons why many might not have understood digital health is that there are low numbers. What I mean low numbers, I mean there is very few research in the area of digital health, not only in Nigeria or Africa, but in the world. It would be good if we have more nurses, more doctors, more healthcare professionals who will look at this opportunity and say, okay, I want to dedicate my own, my own, my own uh, academic journey to researching more about digital health, what it can do, to researching more about artificial um, intelligence, to researching more about machine learning, about deep learning, about data science, and 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 how these 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 technologies can help healthcare, especially in Nigeria and Africa, because I must tell you, Africa has potential. Africa has the potential in numbers. Africa has the potential in young people who are ready to learn. Young people who, who, who are ready to give their all. If you, if you are now, you must have heard of, 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 uh, of, um, of recent financial tech startups in Africa that are making global weight. Yes, we're going to see more of that in digital health. Because now we're going to have more, more nurses, more doctors who are coming into the field to create 
in fintech, you have the, the, the financial guys, the economic guys, and all that sort of doing that stuff. But in digital health, we're going to have more nurses, we're going to have more doctors, we're going to have more mid lab scientists, we're going to have more future therapists, we're going to have more occupational therapists, we're going to have more people come on board to create these solutions themselves. You know, they are the ones who, who are closer to patients, the ones who, who, who consult patients, and the ones who know what the patient feels ones who understand the treatment pathways, that the ones who understand the diagnosis, that the ones who know what the patient needs. Yes, we want them to be the ones creating this solution. Now, leaving the area of research, now let, let, let's talk about uh, the, 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 the technical aspect of this diet. Now, in a recent article I wrote, I talked about no code movement. So now you might not really be, be, be be used to code and all that stuff and all the difficulties involved in, in, in creating software algorithms and, and all that stuff, but they are still skills that you can utilize. Right? We, you followed last, um, you followed yesterday's sessions closely, you would see that, that uh, the speakers made mention of this. You know, they are not really core tech guys. They, they're not, they, they, they didn't study computer science, they didn't study computer engineering, they don't really know much about writing codes and all that stuff. But they had the idea. And with that idea, they were able to communicate the idea with people they believed had the technical skills to bring this idea to life. I strongly believe that everybody here has ideas that can be worked on. While why why not shine away from the from, from the obstacles or the hurdles when you talk about power, when you talk about uh, policy. When you talk about politics, when you talk about internet connection and, and, and all those things, we will still make good progress if we are able to bring in more experts, we're able to bring in more experienced hands, more, 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 more persons who have had good knowledge about what digital health is, especially in Nigeria, Africa. Talk about the you talk about research. Talk about expertise, you know, what, what you need to do to get this skill, what you need to do, understand these things. Like for me, I have I have I have interest in in in, in um, cloud computing, I have interest in artificial intelligence, I have interest in machine learning, I have interest in data science, I have interest in deep learning. These these are where these are areas that I have interest that I am currently trying to see how I can develop. No matter what to do, you you, you, you might not still be as 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 knowledgeable as as people who did things from secondary school, who, who studied it as first degrees, who studied it as second degrees, who work, who, who are currently working in industry. So this is where the the, the the idea of collaboration comes in, the idea of partnership comes in. You know, you partner with the web developer, you partner with the cloud the cloud scientists, you you partner with the uh, with the software developer, you know, you, you partner with the, an engineer, you guys come together and create this idea. And the market is right, you know. People now understand the, 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 the online world more. They, they now understand that to make business thrive, you must be online. To make, to make anything um, succeed in this present disposition, you must be online. And, and the digital platforms are platforms that, that will be hosted on the internet, they will be hosted online. So this is just what we are trying to do. This is just what we are trying to do in a nutshell as a startup to create a platform where everybody can learn, where everybody can come together, interact, network, get experience, get expertise from those people who have gone ahead of us, from, 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 from those people who understand these systems more. Talk about research, we talk about the, about the technical skills, we talk about the community, which I always like to make emphasis on when I write. Community is very, very, very important. So, 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 so Care Code is, is, is among the first digital health communities in, in, in Nigeria that is trying to bring healthcare professionals together, trying to bring doctors together, trying to bring nurses together, trying to bring physicians together, trying to bring medical students together under one roof where we can all learn, where we can all create, where we can all innovate, where we can all lead ourselves into the future, 
go into, into the future to, to, to create solutions that will not just help us in Nigeria or Africa, that will even help the global population. So in a nutshell, these are just the two things I want to just want to, to elaborate on the, the, the need for more research, the need for more research, the need for more research. The need for, for healthcare professionals to up the skills, both soft skills, both solid skills, and all that. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Nozaina, thank you so much. But we have some people in our midst this evening that are connecting from some of the first world nations, such as the United Kingdom. So uh, I, I would like to um, crave the indulgence of um, a uh, um, United Kingdom registered nurse presently in our midst. Um, if he will be happy to share with us in just a minute or two um, the state of utilization of digital health in United Kingdom. If he will be happy to share uh, with us in two minutes the state of utilization of uh, um, digital health in the United Kingdom. And right about now, I would like to just welcome. Um, knows knows uh, all Lagunju at um, If we'll be happy to share with us in two minutes what utilization and adoption of digital health looks like uh, in practice in the United Kingdom. Um, Nozo Lagunju. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Wow, great, great, great. Glad to have you here tonight. Uh, glad to have you here. Thank you so much for honoring this request. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much. I'm really pleased to be in the midst of amazing people here tonight, and I've definitely learned a lot from the Care Code um, group. Thank you very much for this invite. Very quickly, I'm just going to speak very, very quickly on um, how the digital health is in in the UK. Um, the NHS, the National Health Service in the UK, is the world largest integrated health system, and it currently employs about uh, 1.7 million people and deals with 1 million patients every 36 hours. And that means that the NHS generates and manages vast amount of data that provides very significant innovative opportunities. If, if you <laughs> listen to that very well, you would, 1 million patients every 36 hours means that digital health is, um, <laughs> is kind of like the basis of healthcare in the UK. Um, and then, you know, for things like that to work, you need um, a world-class science base. <clears throat> At the moment, the UK has a, has a very active digital health market that comprises of both the private and the public sectors. So you see um, both private and public sectors coming together um, to centralize data. For instance, if you visit a doctor, your private doctor, called general practitioners or your GP surgeries as they're called here, yeah. the data that your GP surgeries um, gathers about you, your blood test, your results, all that stuff is centralized into a particular system. Of course, with your consent and you know, government regulating the um, uh, frameworks that govern the use of all those data. And then, but the, the important thing is that every patient's data is centralized in the healthcare system. And so if you present to the hospital, whatever hospital in the UK today, um, doctors, nurses have access to your allergies. They have access to whether you want resuscitation being carried out in case of an emergency. So it, it means that um, digital health is really active, very active in the UK. And so um, also, I, I also like to add that um, I've listened very keenly to the panel <laughs> discussion today. And it's really, I, I, I'd like to, see um, uh, how, this is, how this is going to work in Nigeria because um, we are mostly Nigerians on the group and the essence of all this thing is to see how we can be better uh, citizens and better promoters of digital health in the country. The UK also uses um, artificial intelligence uh, in the in the past few years, uh, I think last year, the UK government department for digital culture and media announced that the, the, there's going to be a national AI strategy, which sets out like a 10 year plan to make the UK global AI superpower. And, and that means that um, in healthcare, you have algorithms that like govern patient care. For instance, a patient is admitted today, there is, for instance, a patient with um, 
chest pain. There is an algorithm that suspects probably whether it's pulmonary embolism. And then there's an algorithm that uh, like uh, sets out the care, the pattern of care that would be set out to that patient. So doctors, nurses can follow those algorithms. Of course, these things have disadvantages, but you see how artificial intelligence is working. And then of course, um, one of the major issues is data privacy in the UK or many places regulating this data that everybody has access to. So uh, looking forward, my two minutes is up. Uh, I believe that this is more likely to bring like uh, clarity as to how fast digital is, go is going to move on. Companies and investors in digital health will need to keep pace with the fast moving regulations and guidance, particularly in the area of artificial intelligence, as well as um, potential divergences between um, the UK and its citizens. Thank you. Oh, wow, wow. Uh, um, no, that hear me. Thank, thank you so much for that wonderful uh, um, contribution. And I'm um, sorry for the inconvenience um, that, that um, because I, I just, I, I contacted him just in, in less than, less than five minutes, less than five minutes ago to just, you know, share briefly with us what digital health um, utilization looks like in the United Kingdom. Thank you so much for coming. And, um, before we, we bring this conference to an end, I would like to pass across some very, very important announcements. Please don't go yet. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. We have very key takeaways of this conference for us. We have key takeaways of this conference for us. So please just stay tuned as I pass this um, information across. Okay, the first thing I would like to pass across to our participants is that please, um, during the course of the discussion, we're able to understand that one of the ways to, you know, uh, um, find your feet, uh, find your foot in health tech is to be around people with like minds, um, be, be in a community that can facilitate your growth and transition into the health tech space. So right about now, I would like to encourage everyone right here to please go to your social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and follow all the guest speakers so far in this event. Dr. Fumi Adewara was here yesterday, the founder and the CEO of Mobi Health International, a multi-award winning telemedicine platform. Please. Go on right there and follow her. Follow Dr. Simpa. Follow Dr. Akongwe Raphael. Follow Vivian Aoshiko on her social media. Follow Nozaila Daniel. Follow Oluwa Tobi Adewumi. These people share resources. They share information that could equip you and then, you know, uh, um, help you to transition better into the health tech space. And even if you're looking for just random information, if you are looking to keep updates with the trends in the health tech space, follow these people to get um, these information uh, from them. Also, I, I would like to recommend some communities that you can join to, to, to also keep track with your progress and also to facilitate your growth in the digital health space. One of those community is the... Um, uh, care code care city online community is a community of digitally literate healthcare professionals that uh, that that you know shares resources, share opportunities in health tech that will be useful for um, aspiring health tech enthusiasts. Also, uh, don't worry, I will share the links. I will share the links on the conference platform so that you can just join at one click. Also, another. Um, community I would like to recommend is the nurses in tech community. If you're, if you're a nurse here, you can join that community. Nurses in tech is a community of um, nurses that are, you know, enthusiastic about health tech. And um, this community helps you, it, it, they, they share resources, they share uh, uh, platforms, they share events that you can, you know, attend to gain more insight and to develop yourself in the world of digital health. Also, uh, an, another community that is, uh, that I will advise and that I will recommend that you join is the One Health Tech community. 
the One Health Tech community. So I, I will be sharing the links to this community on the conference platform so that uh, we can join. So um, that is the first information. The second announcement, which is a very big announcement I would like to make right now is, I have um, made this announcement yesterday, but now I'm going to give details of this announcement. Care code as one of the leading digital health startup in Nigeria that is aimed uh, at equipping healthcare professionals with the digital skills needed to you know, facilitate their journey in health tech, we will be organizing or we are organizing a 90 days career transition mentorship program into health tech. <laughs> If you are excited to hear Yay! that, just show some excitement in the chat box. If you are excited to hear that, show some excitement in the, in the chat box. We are organizing a 90 days career mentor, a, a career trans, um, transition uh, mentorship program for healthcare professionals that are willing to explore a path in health tech. Also, if you are a if you are if you are an healthcare professional that you have an idea you are planning to work on or you have an idea that you've probably discarded and you're willing to bring back to life you can also be part of this career mentorship um program as you're going to be enlightening us through series of things that we've put together to you know um ease and facilitate our transition your your transition into the digital health space so more information on this, on how to apply for this mentorship program will be shared on the conference platform. More information on how to apply the eligibility criteria and what the, uh, the, the, the mentorship program has to offer will be shared on the conference, uh, uh, on the conference platform. Also, another announcement I would like to make is all the resources that have been used in delivering lectures, um, online resources that have been shared during the course of this program would also be shared on the, on, on the conference platform for access and um, for further readings and um, 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 study. Also, I would like to also announce that a certificate of participation in this digital health conference will be issued to all uh, participant to all uh, attendees of this conference. This, and this is a good point to end the conference. But before that, I would like to uh, invite the CEO and the founder of Care Code Digital Health Hub, the person of North Ayala, Daniel, to just give a, a closing appreciation to all participants of this conference. North Ayala, Daniel, you are welcome, sir. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, a big thank you to everyone who made this conference a success. Uh, thank you for, we thank the volunteers, uh, our sponsors, and our partners. Without them, this conference wouldn't have been made possible. I will thank all healthcare professionals. You know, it's a neat conference, and you know, we're not looking for crowd. We're not, we're not looking for big people. We're looking for people who are interested in what we are doing. And, and everybody, most of us here are healthcare professionals. Of course, I, I'm, pre, I'm currently on call. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm in hospital. And some of us are, are just resuming duty or, or leaving work. I really appreciate you. And I believe that from the efforts of this conference, a lot is going to be born. A lot of us are going to get ideas. We're going to work together. We're going to be inducted into the community where we'll keep, where we'll keep communicating with you developing your skills, whatever skills you have, whether it's in data science, whether it's in web design, whether it's in front end, whether it's in cloud computing, whether it's in AI, whether it's in ML, whether it's in data science or whatever, we are creating strategic partnerships with individuals and bodies outside Nigeria and, and, and part of Nigeria uh, and, and, and letting them know that we have a community of, of, of healthcare professionals in Africa who are ready to learn. So we'll give you more details um, on the on the 90 day mentorship um, session. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be amazing. But it's going to be strictly for those people who are interested.
Like I said, it's not the public stuff, it's those people who are interested. Nurses, doctors, pharmacists, healthcare enthusiasts who are interested in the digital health space. I want to thank you once more. I want to thank our, our guest speakers, Dr. Simpa, Dr. Adewara, Dr. Kube, um, um, I really appreciate you for taking our time to be with us here. And we promise that next year's conference will be amazing. We're planning to make it a, a hybrid, technical and virtual. God's grace is going to be, it's going to be mind blowing, it's going to be amazing. Talk with us on social media, follow us on social media pages, subscribe to our newsletters, and we'll keep. Thank you so much. Have a great night.